All right, fine. I'll do it. Mabrazier did it, but people have been harassing me on Instagram to get it done too. I'll make a goddamn map filled with tribal huts. Wait, what? Have all the resources on this map collapsed into a single singularity of fish? What is going on? This is what you wanted. Wait, you can put them on water? Let's try to avoid doing that. How do I make them go away? There you go. This is what you wanted. You wanted me to put tribal villages on every tile. Do you know how long this is going to take? I'm even putting them on the mountains. They're on the mountains. Why did I do a standard size map? Why didn't I do a small map? What's wrong with me? There you go, volcano. You can have yourself a little tribal village as well. I'm just going to hope that like if a tribal village is a place where it shouldn't be, that it, the map will just like not have it like activate and we'll just be like no nah, it can't be there so that doesn't make any sense so we're just not gonna have it in the game like these ones in the water i'm hoping they just disappear and don't cause me issues i'm still sick you don't know how many coughs i've edited out of this right now it's it's a lot it's too many it's it's way too many can i just not be sick anymore that would be great all right we're getting there we're starting to fill her up just about getting to the last little bits now I, i'm gonna go over with a fine tooth comb and make sure i don't like I, I, I might miss a tile or two but i'm gonna try and make sure i do my best to make sure i don't miss any even the cliffs of dover will have uh tribal villages on it we're getting there we're getting there towards the end we're almost done we've got a few more to place just to catch these last little bits on the coastline and stuff like that but we're just about ready it's actually very difficult to tell what's going on with this map with this many tribal villages on there we go, that's a uh, thumbnail-worthy picture right there. I'm trying to think of what civilization will take the most advantage from the uh, Tribal Village Only map mod. Ooh, I think Poundmaker might be the best choice because he gets really, really strong scouts. We might even be able to kill someone with these guys. Random saves, deity difficulty, untitled map, regular settings, let's go. All right, nice. We're starting off in an interesting location. Looks like we've got, uh, we've got some jungle, we've got some tribal villages. I've never seen that many before. I'm a bit surprised that we have this many tribal villages. Hmm. I wonder how that happened. Yeah, I think I'll settle on the river. That seems like a reasonable move to me. Also, tribal villages. Uh, oh, apparently, if you pick these up when you haven't settled, you'll get a lot of, um, like, tech boosts and civic boosts, which is pretty damn nice. Yeah, I guess that's, like, the only thing you can actually get until you settle a city, right? Does that mean delaying my city settling is actually a better move here? Because I'll get more boosts? Wait. Could I theoretically boost the entire tree if I just never settle and wander around with a settler? This sounds like it's ridiculous in the worst way possible, but it's actually working. Like, I'm I'm getting the boosts. And, and like, this is, like, an insane amount of science and stuff. And now I have a friendship with Lisbon. I don't know where I'm supposed to, like, get that gold because I, I haven't settled my city. I'm getting envoys, and now I'm getting envoys. Okay, I guess I can't get any more, uh, what you call them. The things that give me tech boosts. Yeah, I'm getting just envoys now. <laughs> okay. Well, I have all the envoys ever now, so I'm happy about that. Instantaneously suzerain of Lisbon. Thank you very much. I'm actually generating diplomatic favor without a capital city settled. That's incredible. All right, I don't think I'm going to actually need to recruit a scout because I'm likely to get one from all these tribal villages. So I'll probably just get to work on a monument. Free builder, uh, plus one population, this builder. Can't do anything with this builder just yet, actually. I guess I could build a farm. I guess he's just going to go go to sleep there. Gold, gold. Where's my free scout? I want a free scout. There's, there's boosts going to waste here. I guess in theory, I could be picking up these up with a builder, right? Yeah, I should probably do that. There we go, there's masonry and a free recon unit. At long last, we got our free recon. Let's step out this way and take the faster movement on hill terrain. Another free recon, excellent. This one will take the faster movement on woods and rainforest. Another free builder, beautiful, beautiful. Not that I can do anything with them yet. I'm actually not going to scout with the builders because I want these guys to accumulate a ridiculous amount of experience so I can murder people with scouts. Nice, so now we have hill and ground movement, so these guys are going to be able to rip through the terrain and get lots of promotions. I don't, I don't think you should have this many envoys at turn 10. I have like 15 envoys or something ridiculous so far. Knowledge of riding, more boosts. Alright, this guy has a level up. I'm going to take ranger. I want these guys to be able to get around as fast as possible. Also, suzerain of Cahokia already. Ba-bam! I get to see even more tribal villages and more city-states that I can instantaneously become suzerain of. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Look how much... Wow, we're actually generating an insane amount of gold, science, and soon-to-be production in our capital. We're getting four, four production... or four gold from each of these guys, two science from this guy, and two production here. 
This is like the strongest capital ever, even though I basically wandered around the map for ages. And I don't need to worry about any of like the tech boosts because I've got them all from the, uh, the pre-settling wandering around that I did. There's another envoy to plug it to Hong Kong. Officially generating four diplomatic favor per turn on turn 11. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And I have five builders. I, I don't even have anything I can actually build with them aside from farms. I have a population six capital. It's just like maxed out because every time I pick up a population boost, it can't go anywhere else. So it's just like, yep, it goes to the capital. All right, I'm going to take gorilla and ambush because I want this unit to be like the combat unit of the century. I got a relic. I don't even, I haven't even unlocked the thing that gives me double experience from recon units yet. This is starting to get ridiculous. I was thinking that I wouldn't need to build any of these scouts because I'm going to get them all for free. Well, there's another one. So finally, I got another one of these guys that I might be able to send off to get a few more of these tribal villages. I was getting worried there that I wouldn't get enough of these scout units, but I think, I think we're starting to get enough builders at the very least. There is Code of Laws and we can plug in Survey at long last. I'll also plug in Urban Planning because I don't think I need the Faith Income right now when I'm making plus four from that relic that we picked up. My god, I have five suzerainties on turn 15 and I'm making five diplomatic favor per turn and I've got like half the map revealed so far and it looks like I'm completely on my own. There are like seven other players in this game, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one in here. Oh, there's Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Nice to meet you. I wonder what these guys are actually looking like because they have all the advantages of the uh, tribal villages as well. Wow, these guys are doing really, really well. Yeah, check that out. They, these guys have double my science and double my culture. So I guess that might just be the deity bonuses kicking in and the fact that they have a whole bunch of cities. So I'm going to need to start settling, which we have already started to, to try and catch up and beat these guys. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. We have the Meekwap, which gets uh, a whole bunch of bonus things for every uh, like adjacent resource, right? Yeah, food from adjacent bonus resources and gold from adjacent luxury resources. And I think it also gives you a little bit of housing and production. That's pretty nice. Sure, I'll slap a few of those down there. Not like I need them, considering I have 93 score towards a golden age. <laughs> just casual. Just a casual 93 score towards a golden age in the ancient era. So I need to try and get ahead of these scouts and steal as many of these things from them as possible. So they can't get them themselves. There we go, very first Okichita with the ambush promotion, which basically means I'm running around with like knights in the ancient era, right? They're like 40 combat strength. Well, they're uh, maybe more equivalent to... What the hell are these guys equivalent to? Probably not equivalent to pikemen. I'm basically running around with pikemen in the ancient era. Look at these warriors. They don't stand a chance. <laughs> should I go murder someone? I think I should maybe try to kill um, uh, the Khmer or Brazil. I'm going to need more of these guys if I'm going to pull that off though. So I should probably just grab as much of these tribal villages as possible. Another little suzerainty for myself. That brings me up to uh, seven suzerainties on uh, turn 18. <laughs> We're making seven diplomatic favor per turn. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what even to say about this. I like, I'm, I'm genuinely just kind of, <laughs> this is just silly. Hey, we just unlocked craftsmanship, which has that really nice policy card towards building builders. Hey guys, do you think I'll need to build builders this game? Yeah, I'm not sure yet. I might, I might need a lot of them. I actually, there's so many builders around my city that I can't move my settlers out. I have to like, I have to move builders just to move my settlers out of my city. You know what? I'm feeling kind of frisky. Today, we're going to take River Goddess as our pantheon. Let's go for a lot of housing and amenities and then kill people with scout units. All right. Second ambushed promoted Okchikita. Okchikita? I don't know how to say it properly. But now he also has the camouflage promotion. And uh, I think this guy is ready to go start a war. I'll need a few more though, and these guys aren't nearly ready. Just planning a few districts for later so we can get these huge populations in these cities, which I think will be pretty nice. I mean, they already have pretty ridiculous populations considering it's turn 22 and I have a nine population capital. It's almost like I am a DD AI. Okay, no, I regret the pins. It makes it way harder to see what's going on. Undo the pins. <laughs> Un take away the pins. We can just remember. We can just remember. This is way too many builders. This is way too many builders. I suppose now is as good a time as any to declare war on the Khmer. Just get the war rolling. Start building up even more experience on our scouts. And uh, let them know who's boss. What the? Like, I <laughs> how are you supposed to play with this many builders clogging up your empire, dude? I like. Do I just delete some of them? Like, this is way too many. Oh my god, my builders are so expensive. Wait a minute. These builders aren't free. They increase the cost of your builders. The game has lied to me. 
wait, there's a tribal village on this mountain because I forgot to uh, take it off. And it made the mountain all flat and weird looking. The mount, like the mountain looks like a hill. <laughs> I think the game is confused. Like every other mountain looks totally fine, but this one mountain with a tribal village on it just like kind of looks like it's been squooshed. I shall name it the Squooshy Mountain. There you are, Squooshy Mountain, named and recovered for all of eternity. I would like to point out that I have 213 error score. I need 25. I have almost 100, no, is it 10 times? I almost said 100. 100 would be a lot. No, 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 I have almost 10 times the uh, error score I need. 100 was me being a little bit ambitious there. <laughs> hey, there's Signy, uh, which I suppose is yet more error score that I don't need. Something that's beautiful that has happened is there's nobody who lives out here to the northwest. So I'm just sending all my unpromoted scouts over there to pick up the uh, plus 20 combat strength and then sending them back over here to the front line with the uh, Khmer, which will be opening up in a few turns. Once I have three of these guys plus a warrior, I'll feel comfortable to start grinding him down. Oh, there it is. They actually declared war on me, which is quite surprising. I was not expecting them to declare on me, but that's nice because now I have grievances against them. So I should be able to take more in the war without causing any international diplomacy problems. You idiots. Why would you declare war on me? I have like the strongest empire out of all of us. Well, I guess from their perspective, it doesn't look that way. So I can kind of understand that. But still, you guys made a huge error. Uh, in the parlance of Yu-Gi-Oh, you have activated my trap card. Wait, they're stealing my city state as well. That's not allowed. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to do that. Oh my God, they dumped every single envoy they have into every single city state to take suzerainty. Well, I definitely can't let them have Lisbon. Like that's just, that's obviously my city. State. The other ones, I don't care that much about, although it does completely cripple my yields. <laughs> I'll take Hattusa back, I guess, because that's an easy one. Wasn't there a second scientific city-state? Was it murdered? I swear there was a second scientific city-state. Maybe it was murdered. I'm being bullied by the AI in my own game. This, these are my rules. I made this game. Get out of here. How dare you? All right, let's quickly settle this and then we can get to work on actually cleaning up all their scouts. And also, the cool thing is, I get a lot of experience with for fighting with my scouts because I still have the card plugged in. The war is going quite well. We've killed a couple of scouts. There is one over here that we're going to be picking up as well. And uh, we've started to push him back. We've basically cut into the majority of his scouts. There's a couple running around up here and he's kind of still fighting for Suzerainty of Lisbon, which is very annoying because I would really like to not have to deal with that, but I am going to have to deal with that. Listen, I just wanna, I just wanna like collect tribal villages and murder people, okay? Am I really asking for that much? On some of these guys, I'm actually only going to take like one of the movement promotions to try to get them to the high combat strength as fast as possible. We can always pick up the other promotion later. So I think it's far more important that I get these guys combat ready. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. I really, 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 really want these guys ready to fight in the next few turns because I thought I would have enough down here but I'm already taking some pretty hefty hits and this is just from killing scout also I would like to point out that it's uh it's turn 30 and uh I have I have civic boosts for uh for totalitarianism like th it goes all the way to the industrial era like <laughs> I have I have discovered the secrets of fascism in 2840 BC this actually, because, you know, your tourism defense is based on how many, um, yeah, <laughs> how much culture you've earned, but it actually also counts the civic boosts. And as you can see, uh, I've got 70. I've got 70 domestic tourists on turn 30. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a little bit crazy. Somebody has 79. How do you have 79? My goodness. All right, sweet. Working on political philosophy on turn uh, 31. That's pretty early to be getting that technology up. I think I should say that so that everyone knows that that's really early. Also, we have a government plaza. Uh, sorry, we have a holy site and a campus finished already, which is uh, it's pretty good going. You know, I'm fairly happy about that. We could purchase a settler if we really wanted to. Or we could purchase uh, nine scouts. Well, I mean, like, we, we all know, like, settlers are just always better than scouts but we know what the answer is here don't we we're gonna buy all of the scouts in existence i'm probably not gonna bother to even level these ones up and just use them as support units in the war against uh, the khmer the khmer and india that's right because india also declared war on me i don't know how you got a 38 combat strength capital wait oh that's your capital that makes sense yes 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 palace guard districts difficulty and the heavy chariot i should probably pillage the district that's giving you that combat strength then shouldn't i 
I love how I'm playing in like an incredibly dumb like meme mode where you put a tribal village on every single square and I still decided to go with what the most optimal strategy was was to like play the, the civilization with the best scout because you get a lot of free scouts doing this and then to like try to kill people with those scouts by leveling them up by getting a bunch of experience from the tribal villages like only I would play like an incredibly silly game mode and then try to like optimally win the game playing that game mode like <laughs> I don't I, like I don't know <laughs> it's just an observation okay uh, now that we have uh, all of these scouts out, we're going to go ahead and... Yep, that's right. We're going to purchase even more. We're going to drown them in scouts. Our, our chiclets our, our, our will blot out the sun, damn it. I don't even know how to say these things. All right. These actually, these chariots are... Uh, they actually put up a pretty good fight. Now, there's still no comparison to our chiclets, uh, our chiclets. But, they, you know, they, they put up a reasonable fight, I would say. Let's go ahead and see if we can clear out a little bit of this noise that's happening. I'm getting a bit tired of all these people saying that I can't conquer the world with scouts. It's like, who are you to tell me I can't chase my dreams? My grandpappy said I could be an astronaut if I wanted to. Oh no, they almost killed a scout! Retreat! Run away! Oh, we can almost kill this slinger, actually. If I get enough troops... I'm gonna play... I'm gonna take it easy on the whole, you know, gung-ho attitude that I've been taking for a bit here. Yeah, I, I like how embarrassing would it be if I actually lost a war where I have like the most advantages possible Like I, I don't think I need this many builders guys. I have too many. They need to I need it needs to stop There's like there's a point where it has stopped being like ha 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 Look at all these builders I have and it has become like oh god How do I even deal with having this many builders? Also, my people have discovered the secrets of radio on turn 34, or 35 rather. We have almost actually got the boost for rocketry, I can imagine. Can you actually get that from a tribal village? I'm curious. A huge proportion of like everyone's military is scouts, because we all got scouts for free. Which, for some reason, is just very entertaining to me. We're all running around fighting each other with scouts. Oh man, imagine playing like a multiplayer game like this. This would be fun. Oh, yep, just casually boosting the space race on turn 36. Feels good, man. This could actually be, like, an incredible run if we took it a little bit seriously. Also, I need to get Kumasi off my back because <laughs> there's just a bit of a problem down here with a whole bunch of Kumasi units kind of preventing me from getting around the zone of control here. There we go. We got around the zone of control. Feels good. We're starting to, uh, we're starting to push in with our scouts. Uh, against the Khmer. Now the Khmer does have like a pretty good line of units over here Although I think I might be able to push them back a little bit I get some breathing room for this poor little warrior that's kind of uh, you know taking a beating here now uh, it, it should it should be noted right? Yes We have all these nice tech boosts But the real plan is to try to get the machinery and uh, upgrade to skirmishers Which is going to involve uh, getting not only as much science as possible But also as much gold so that's why we're going for the harbor district and trading internationally because we're gonna need a stockpile of gold To be able to turn any of these guys into skirmishers and I'm pretty sure the second I get skirmishers, I just like auto win the game because I'll have them like around 30, turn 40 to 50, maybe 60. And there'll be 50 combat, like there'll be units with 50 combat strength running around on turn 50. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's an, just an auto win, like in reality. I actually turned off like yields because it was like way too much clutter on my screen. So every now and again, I just click on a city and try to like visually identify, yeah, which of these tiles could use an improvement. And then like try to make that decision. Also, my capital has 12 population in it on uh, turn 36. That is uh, four turns per population in the capital. That's a lot of population. Like, look how many tiles are working. This is kind of outrageous. And like, considering how early it is into the game, this is really fun though. Like, I, I really do suggest you all you guys go in, make your own map, plop down all the tribal villages. This is fantastic. That's right, we know all about the space race, like we know some of the secrets of the space race, but we've only just fully unlocked how the wheel works. I'm fairly certain the only government that makes any sense is either Classical Republic or Oligarchy, right? Although I don't think Scouts get the plus four combat strength, but they would get the experience, which would mean I guess I would need to use up less stuff to get highly leveled Scouts, which I think I'll go for. I like that plan, yeah, sure. Oh my god, apparently you can levy city-states and then use them to gather up tribal villages, which is what the Khmer did up here, which is like truly a big brain move. I'm actually genuinely impressed that they pulled that off. Even if, if it was like completely accidental, it's like emergent behavior that ends up being intelligent. No, why did you get a catapult in here? Stop. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to have th strong units. It's illegal. I've made it bad by decree. You cannot do this. There's so many units. Good, 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 good God. 
We are slowly pushing back. We've also started the assault on this city. We actually started the assault on this city before the assault on Ankar Tom. Because I'm, I'm trying to get enough, like, fully upgraded units around this city. And I just, I just don't have enough of them, right? I only have these kind of crappy units holding the line right now. And they're getting bombarded by this catapult, which is, like, doing them some serious damage. So I need to get my proper dudes into the fray. Also, having this many units this early into the game, like, makes this take so long. I think I've been playing for like an hour and a half now, and I'm... <laughs> this is as far as I got. I have a pile of builders on top of my capital, and I've, like, pillaged a bit of, like, this land. But I guess, I mean, the other thing is, I did basically clear out this entire area of tribal villages. There's still a few, like, hanging around with a bit up here and stuff like that. But generally speaking, yeah, this is, like... <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's very entertaining. I, you know what would be actually a really interesting idea? Is if you took one map with just the normal amount of like resources and tribal villages on it. And then you made an exact copy of that and then put a tribal village on every tile. And then observe the AI and see what like changes between the two. Oh, that might be something we do in a video actually as a follow up to this. This is a little bit crazy. Like, it's it's turn 39. I have a holy side of campus and a harbor built, and I'm building a government plaza in one, one turn. I have, like, a military strength of 400, and I'm invading the Khmer with, like, my unique scout. Like, I think this is, like, about as wacky as I could have imagined this to have gone. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of it. I'm pretty happy about it. You know what? Since I can't fully surround this city, I may as well just, like, start working on this city with my other units. Uh, and I just bring my strong guys down here and, and, and rip this city down. That seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. I would like to uh, take the city now. Thank you. Are you not... You just don't... You don't want to do it? Okay. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Yeah, that's okay. If you, if you don't want to take the city, that's fine. Or did you already attack? I swear, did you already attack? I don't remember. I think you might have attacked. Yeah, I, I think you attacked. Whoops, uh, never mind. Delete the footage, quick. <laughs> I didn't. Don't tell anyone how I live. I was just about to say, hmm, maybe we should get the six farms for the feudalism boost. And then I checked the civic tree and I remembered that we had every single boost possible all the way up until like the space race. <laughs> All right, the Khmer has pulled out Swordsman, which means he now has a unit that is actually capable of fighting off my uh, Ochikatas, or Chicklets, or whatever you want to call them. Which is not ideal. It's far from ideal, but it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal either because he actually pulled the catapult out of the city. And that was actually the thing that I was worried about. The catapult was the, the thing causing me an issue because I, I couldn't attack the city because he kept bombarding my troops with the catapult. So now that that's not a problem, you know, I can just move on and, and start capturing him. Pop a little bit of loyalty in here. We should be able to hold this city. I think we're in a golden age. Yeah, we're about to be in a golden age, which means, well, I think everyone will be in a golden age. But uh, we, sh we should be fine to hold this city. That's right. We met with the people in the tribal village and have finally discovered the secrets to rocketry. Uh, nice. <laughs> these people have uh, have a very advanced society considering they live in these little round huts made of wattle and daub. Ah, there we are. The juicy golden age, which we had over 328 score. We needed 25. And um, we're probably going to get another couple of golden ages too because we're still finding tribal villages. And we reached a population of 15 in the capital on turn 50, 41. We have a 15 population capital. And it's actually starting to suffer incredibly for amenities because we just can't support this large of a population. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> I really don't know which one of these I should take. On the one hand, monumentality would be great for being able to move my builders around really efficiently. On the other hand, um, free inquiry is basically useless because I already have every ure Eureka that is possible to get. I almost said every Urethra that is possible to get, which is a kind of a collection that I really don't want to partake in. Uh, you know, if you're a person who collects Urethras, please don't at me on Instagram. All right. Uh, you know what? I think, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take Exodus the Evangelists just so we get our religion just a little bit sooner. All right. All right. All right. Let's get us around on this city at long last and we'll be able to pick away at it although it does have a pretty decent combat strength so it's going to take an awfully long time to bring this town so we might have to even wait until we have skirmishers still even though we have this properly surrounded Ooh, this is a good opportunity the swordsman has jumped out of the city i could actually make a move on the capital here as long as this catapult doesn't run back inside I think we have an opportunity here 
to do a significant amount of damage to the capital city. Although, you know, getting control of it because he has a victor established in there. So I need to actually get rid of all this noise down here to the south first. And there we have it, right? So they should be in a position to where I could maybe kill them. <laughs> at, at long last, we have, we have slowly managed to manipulate things to where we might actually get a kill on these guys. Although I, I think I will focus on getting, getting rid of their cities down here to the south first. Oh my God, you can get governor titles from these things as well. That's crazy. I just got a governor title from a tribal village. That has to be incredibly rare because I think that's the first one I've actually picked up. Also, I would uh, I would like to point out that it is currently turn 45 and I'm making 42 science per turn. I'm making one science per turn of the game, basically, thanks to these governor titles. And in fact, if I plugged in connoisseur as well, we would be pretty close to getting one culture per turn for the entire game as well, which is uh, it's a pretty good amount of culture and science, not gonna lie. I'm, uh, I'm not too far away from getting my hands on machinery. Although I don't really have the gold to support a, uh, a skirmisher army, but we'll work on that. Don't you worry about that. Perhaps we should build a builder. Oh wait, never mind. And here comes our very first chance to start hammering away at this city. Should be taking it down in the next turn or two. I think, in fact, I think I should be able to take it down next turn. Yikes. Uh, this catapult is a bit of a problem, but it shouldn't be a problem forever and we should be able to work our way around it. All right, little city, it's time for you to meet your maker. Adios, city. So we captured ourselves another city. That's going to provide us with loyalty pressure over here. I think I might try to take out this city as well before we come back for Anchor Tom, because we are only a few turns away from getting machinery. Time to found a religion, and uh, I think we shall call this religion tribalism yes the religion of tribalism is uh has a river goddess we also believe in a uh, religious community getting extra housing and of course the stupa which will provide us with a little bit of faith and another amenity so in total actually from our religion from just building our holy site in the right place and getting the buildings and all that sort of stuff we will get a total of plus three amenities and plus four housing which seems like a pretty good spread to me ah that's of course tribalism is the true path of salvation please ignore all those other ones captured another builder from the Khmer like we need it and uh let's go ahead and take down this city I think is that their very last city aside from their capital and I believe it is so that means we can go ahead and take out their capital and be in really good shape a uh, cute little trick by the way for you guys uh, I, I didn't expect there to actually be like any strategic tips in this particular game considering I literally filled the map with tribal villages uh but if an enemy is building an encampment while you're at war with him if you just position a unit on the encampment you can pillage it the second it's finished and they get no value out of it cutesy little trick that not a lot of people uh, Might know about so I figured I would share it with you looks like Brazil has decided to get in on the action over here as well Which is a little bit concerning because if I leave the city at enough health for Brazil to take it I would be a little bit upset with myself. So we're gonna have to take this very very methodically and uh, make sure that we get the very last hit on it. God, I'm dreading the thought of actually buying more units to micromanage, but I do need to spread my religion. That's uh, that's a, not a very nice swordsman. Let's try to get river combat bonuses on our side to make him a little bit less scary. I'm not quite getting as many envoys as I used to, so it's kind of hard to hold on to suzerainty. I guess I will take Lisbon back just so I don't have to deal with them. But yeah, like, <laughs> I, I forgot to remember that, like, even though I was getting all those envoys, so were the AI, and they were not afraid to spend them. And when I declared war on them, all of a sudden they saw every single city-state in the game and were able to spend all their envoys in a single turn, which uh, didn't go well for me in terms of, uh, in terms of outcomes. Also, annoyingly... I don't, like, this city anchor Tom, like, perfectly built a holy site in the only place where I won't get my Pantheon benefits, which is off of a river. Like, he had so many, and like, he's playing the Khmer. He gets his own special benefits for building these on a river. Like, what were you thinking? Also, cool little thing about the Khmer, or, or, or about these scouts that can move after attacking, is that, uh, as you would expect, you can attack the city and then just leave, promote, and then a new unit can take up that tile. So we were basically guaranteed to get this. But we managed to kill the Khmer with only scouts. Now, in fairness, they are stronger than normal scouts. And we specifically tailored the map to be able to get them to the incredibly powerful promotion. But I'm pretty sure this is the only way that promotion is viable. Because getting a scout to that level in a timely manner in a normal deity game would be an effort in futility. Of course, apparently, uh, murdering another, another civilization doesn't do well for your diplomacy. Oh, oh my god, these are 230 each? That's a ridiculous amount of gold. Hold on, Canada, give me some of your delicious, delicious money. I have all of the diplomatic favor ever. So he'll give me 20 gold per turn and 530 gold for 69 diplomatic favor. 
Nice. Now I'll be able to get a significant amount of these guys upgraded into Skirmisher, which, you know, should lead on into other good things in terms of uh, killing everyone else in the game. My goodness, these are expensive and it's eating into my income already. Well, well let's go ahead and see if Brazil wants to give me his money. Hi, Brazil. How are you? Nice to meet you. You don't have a whole lot of money. Oh, Sweden has a lot of money. They'd probably give this away for like 89? Ooh, a little bit less. Somewhere between... Ah, there it is. 81. Diplomatic favor for all of your cash. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And now I'll be able to get my hands on another couple of these skirmishers. I just want to point out, it's, it's turn 53. And uh, I'm researching uh, medieval era tech. Just, just want to point that out there. You know, uh, tech-wise, I'm making 50 signs per I'm making more signs per turn than there are turns in the game. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Apparently, we have discovered environmentalism. All right, we have... <laughs> like, I'm actually kind of blown away by this. We have every single civic, with the exception of these last three. And, and of these last three, only two of them are not boosted. We have every single civic boost in the entire game. And I think we're near enough to having every single science boost with the exception of the information era and a little bit of the atomic era. It's kind of, it's kind of nutty. I wonder, <laughs> I guess this kind of answers the question of uh, what if, what if uh, you had every single boost in the game from very early in the game? Oh my God, when I'm granted a recon unit, I now get skirmishers. That is pretty damn nice. Here comes our very first skirmisher. I wonder how much damage he does to the city. That's actually a pretty significant amount of damage, considering he doesn't need to melee attack to do it. All right, cool. Let's uh, let's go. It's a me. It's a Mario. Let's step in here. Shoot this guy. Shoot, and then step out with you. Can you actually make it to assist? You cannot, but you can shoot and then cross the river, and then you can come up here. Nice. So we've got the city surrounded, and we should be able to take it in the next turn or two. Oh my god, I've got the level 6 Skirmisher. I wonder if I'll be able to get to the fabled 420 experience that's required to get to level 8. I'm not even really trying anymore. Like, this has just become easy. Now that I have these guys, the Skirmishers, like, I just kind of walk all over my enemies. Um, <laughs> so I think I think the game has just become kind of trivial now because I'm top science on turn 58. I, I could probably win, like, a science victory. I don't know, like, turn 150, 160 or something like that. But I think this has been an interesting enough game to kind of see how ridiculous you can kind of take this to be. And uh, let me know if you guys have ideas like this that you'd like to see me try. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.